The main bands of interest for 5G are the so-called millimeter wave bands at around 28, 37, and 39 gigahertz. The specific frequencies vary by country, but they're all in the same ballpark. These were originally used for local multi-point distribution services, but they're now available for cellular. We're interested in them for two main reasons. They're available, and we'll take any spectrum we can get our hands on. And they're big, allowing us to create radio channels that are much larger than the ones we use today in 4G LTE. As with anything else, the bigger something is, the more stuff it can hold. In this case, a wider radio channel can deliver much more data than a narrower channel. If we want to deliver high data rates to our subscribers, so that Bill and Ravi can make their hologram calls, for example, we need bigger channels, and millimeter wave spectrum gives us exactly that. Nothing comes for free, though, and this new spectrum is no different. The higher the frequency, the harder it is for the signal to travel any distance and still be useful. The laws of physics are pretty hard on millimeter wave spectrum. The signal strength drops off very quickly, limiting the effective size of the cell. The signal doesn't bend around corners or pass through walls as well, meaning we actually need to see the antenna to hear the signal. Raindrops can absorb and scatter the signal, so we have to take the weather into account when we lay out the radio network. The good news is, we're moving to smaller cell sizes anyway to increase the density of the radio network. But don't forget, we're also going to have to design, install, and maintain a lot more cells to cover the same area. The better news is, millimeter wave spectrum allows us to do things we couldn't do with the old spectrum. That shorter propagation distance makes it easier to control interference between the smaller cells in a densified network, so that users in the neighboring cells aren't affected by the transmissions from any other cell. There's much more bandwidth available at the higher frequencies, allowing us to deploy radio channels that are hundreds of megahertz wide. These larger channels can carry more data and support more users simultaneously. The shorter wavelengths associated with these higher frequencies also allow us to pack more antennas into the same space. This lets us deploy massive MIMO antennas, which further increase the peak data rates and improve cell edge performance through precise beamforming. Of course, 5G isn't limited to just the millimeter wave frequencies. We'll also be able to use 5G in sub-6 GHz bands, particularly in the 3 to 5 GHz range. These have the advantage of propagating better than the higher frequencies, but because of their longer wavelengths, we'll have to make do with only dozens of antennas in our MIMO systems, instead of hundreds. When you put all of these benefits together, it should be clear that 5G is a significant improvement over 4G LTE, thanks in large part to this new millimeter wave spectrum.